Who needs a prophet anyway? Prophets have an anointing habit of pointing at our flaws. They love to call out when we stray from God, when we've lost sight of the truth. At best, they're a nuisance, and at worst, they're meddling. So who needs these messengers of discomfort and sacrifice? What good are they anyway? Wouldn't it be better if they just went to another soapbox on another corner, anywhere else but here? Well, I read that quote, and it struck a chord with me because the prophetic word usually isn't very comfortable, to say the least. It's often challenging. It calls us to examine ourselves, our lives, our relationships, the world we live in, and to ask, how faithful am I in putting into practice what I say I believe in? How faithful am I in my discipleship as a follower of Jesus Christ? Who needs a prophet? Who needs to hear the prophetic witness of the prophets? We do. Yes, even in 2018, we need to hear the voice of the prophet. Well, this Advent season that we are almost in the middle of centers around prophetic voices. Voices who speak truth and who call the faithful, including you and me, back into faithful living with integrity. Living out who we are and who we are called to be and who we have promised to be as we live in our everyday lives. We hear in these weeks of Advent, preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus, that juxtaposition of God's hope for the world when God created it, and our lives when God created us. With the reality that so often exists, which is the opposite. The antithesis of God's greatest desire for us, and for the world, and all of God created. Prophets like John the Baptist call out injustice, greed, oppression, that is individually and collectively we're often complicit to, if we're honest. When we witness something that's happening around us and we either say or do nothing to make a difference. And they go a step further to call us out of that complacency to respond in a way that is in line with God's greatest desire and God's greatest hope. We're told in our Gospel reading for today that John went into all the region around the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, reaching a baptism of life change that would ultimately lead to a faithful way of life. Well, in truth, yes, it was John who was preaching in the wilderness, but it was God who was speaking through John. And that's exactly what God had done through the prophets of the Old Testament as well. They were speaking the words, but it was God sending a message through them. And what, what is God saying? God is saying to those who gathered with John in the wilderness, there's something that you can be doing. There is a way of life that you could be embracing. There is a hope that you could be sharing. There is good news that you can pass on. Things don't have to be the way they are. And God basically is saying to them, there's a choice. You need to make a choice for yourself, God is saying. God says, I can't make it for you. I'm giving you the gift and the responsibility of free will and the free spirit. I can't force you as much as sometimes I might like to. I can only guide you in a faithful direction. And then God basically says, when you stray from the way, you have to make a choice for yourself. You can choose to turn yourself around, to intentionally think about the faithfulness that you are called to to change your life, and as you change your life, in turn, to impact change on the world you live in. God promises that when we make that choice, 
and integrate faithful discipleship into our lives, God says, I will be with you. I will be with you and I will strengthen your spirit. I will open opportunities for you to make a difference. I will give you courage to speak truth that needs to be spoken. I will give you persistence in heart and soul. I will give you a dogged determination that desires for the world the same as what I desire. Well, the crowds needed to hear what John was calling them to. And they needed to make that choice to repent, to turn themselves around, to hear the prophetic voice, and to hear the prophetic witness of John. But the truth is, we too need that prophetic voice and that prophetic witness of John as much as they did. Because in our human condition, we often stray from what God desires us to be like in our lives. We make decisions not in line with God's greatest desire for the world that he created. And like the people in his own day, we need to hear God speaking to us, not chastising us, or blaming us, or, or pointing out our failures, or out of disappointment, but speaking words of encouragement to us, lovingly calling us back to make choices in our lives that God empowers us to make, and to live those choices in faith. Our world can easily and equally be described as a wilderness. However, we are reminded by John that good things can happen in the world. It's not all doom and gloom. There is hope, because in the wilderness, there we can find restoration and renewal and redemption and new life for ourselves and for all of creation around us. So going back to the quote that I opened this time of reflection with, we need to hear the prophets. We need the prophets to nag at us so that we can become more and more better and faithful followers of Jesus Christ. I read this quote. Biblically speaking, the prophet isn't a fortune teller or a soothsayer who predicts the future but a truth-teller who sees things as they really are, past, present, and future, and who challenges their community both to accept that reality and then to imagine a better one. Accept the reality of what is happening in the world, but imagine a better one. I like that. There's much for us to learn from the prophetic witness of the past, so that we can become the prophetic witness of the present. And yes, you are called to be prophets. Each and every one of us are called by God to be prophets. Whether we believe it or not, we are. So eight lessons that we can learn from John the Baptist and put into practice in our own ministries of discipleship and prophetic witness. First, we're meant to be different. There's no doubt John was different. Think of how he was described and what he ate. Eccentric, to say the least. Well, we too are called to be distinctive. We are set apart from those who are in opposition to God's way and God's truth. Second, challenge the status quo. We've been blessed with an alternative message. And it's a message that is full of hope and good news. So let's preach it. Let's preach it by living it. And as we live it, by sharing it. Third, live what we believe. Walk the talk. Intentionally live each day with each person we meet, consistent with our baptismal covenants that we've entered into with God. Fourth, lead people to Christ. John pointed the way to Jesus, never to himself. It was nothing about ego for him. And we are called to point the way to Jesus too. It's not about us in ministry. It's not about our ego in ministry. It's about God and God's message for God's people and God's world. And so we're called 
to allow God through us to invite others into a meaningful relationship with Jesus in their lives, too. Fifth, be genuine in humility. John obviously spent time listening to God and learning from God and discerning God's truth. And he was humbled in his spirit to be obedient to God's calling on his life and his vocation. And we're called to imitate that same humility before God, too. Six, doubts are normal. You see, John expected something different from Jesus, not exactly what Jesus came and preached and taught. He was surprised by what Jesus said and did. Jesus even challenged John's worldview. It was much bigger than that wilderness where he found himself. And he challenged John's understanding of God, too, and what God could bring into people's lives. Well, even though we may think we know it all, none of us ever has it all worked out. We are still challenged by Jesus today in our own lives. And we may even question and doubt from time to time. And John reminds us that's okay. Seven, oppose injustice and corruption. John railed against injustice when he witnessed it. He wasn't shy about speaking truth to power. And we have voices too. So let's use those voices. We have opportunities to speak loudly. And those who are in the world, often in the political realm, want to hear our voices, the voice of the church. So let's use the voice that God has given to us. And finally, eighth, don't compromise our convictions. John was in prison for his faithfulness. He would not stand down even to the point of his death. Now hopefully we're not going to die for our faith. Some people around the world do. Thank God that's something we don't experience. But that doesn't mean there won't be consequences. Or there won't be sacrifices for us to make. So God says, don't compromise your convictions. Hold on to your faith no matter what. Well, throughout this Advent season, we hear from Isaiah, we hear from Malachi, we hear from Micah, we hear from Jeremiah, uh, prophets who have a message to speak to us as we enter into our celebration of this upcoming season of Christmas and the incarnation of God among us. And of course, this morning, we hear from John, too. Let's remember that we need to continue hearing their voices today and turn our lives around completely. And in so doing, may we be the prophets that we are called to be, speaking the prophetic truth as we live out our prophetic witness. Amen.